Thank you very much. Good afternoon, members of the media. Good afternoon, our, our members. First of all, I would like to say that um, I would like to thank you very much for coming to this very important uh, press briefing. This is our first meeting as a standing committee after the Supreme Court ruling, um, which took us back to the 14th of February after the demise of our great president, Dr. Morgan Richard Sangrai, may his soul rest in eternal peace. As the MDC team, we were founded on the foundation of constitutionalism. We were founded on the foundation of democracy. We were founded on the foundation of non-discrimination. We were founded on the foundation of non-violence. And we met here today as a leadership to say let us reflect back on what happened and let us correct our mistakes because in life it is important that when we make a mistake, we must admit we have made a mistake but use those mistakes as a stepping stone to success. As you can see, we are gathered here today. These are the founding members of the MDC team. And I would also like to allude to the fact that most of the members you are seeing here are the real founders from ZCTU. I'm one of those people together with uh, Honorable Gifchi Manikir and Honorable Pauline Pariwa, who were asked, who were tasked by the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions to go and form a political party together with Gibson Spander, together with Isaac Matongo, together with our late President Morgan Richard Twangerai, together with Nicholas Nzengerere, together with Remus Makuas. But the five have already departed and the three are sitting here today in front of us. We have got the national chairman, who is a former uh, member of the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions in Matebele North. We have got the secretary general. He was the legal research officer at ZCTU. We have got Abed Niko Bebe, the organizing secretary, who was a member of the Zimbabwe Amalgamated Developments Union in Bulawayo. We have got Honorable Mpariwa. She was the chairperson of the Women's Advisory Council of ZCTU, and I was the secretary of the ZCT Women's Advisory Council. We've got Gifchi Manikire, who was the president of PTC. So the people you are seeing here today are the founder members of the movement. But unfortunately, so many things happened before, but we are here today to correct those mistakes. And I'd like to say the MDCT, you know, is here today. We are standing. We are now up, you know, on our toes up on our feet, we are standing and we are raring to go. We want to make sure that Zimbabweans have a better life. Our desire as the opposition is to make sure that we are an opposition which is going to build. We are an opposition which is going to make sure that a Zimbabwean have a better life. We want to make sure that we become a government in waiting for real. We want the people of Zimbabwe to see us through our actions. Right now we've got COVID-19, which has devastated the whole nation. 
And as MDCT, we are saying we want to be a responsible leadership, a leadership which is going to make sure that we work together as a nation so that we fight this scale called corona, coronavirus. And that's why we called our members of parliament to make sure that they attend parliament so that they are able to deal with all the issues to do with coronavirus. People want food out there. People want a better life. And this can only happen when people sit around a, a table, when members of parliament go to parliament to raise those particular issues. But I would like to say to every Zimbabwean, to say as the official opposition, we are here to save you. We, are, we will make sure that we do everything in our power. And we have returned back to our values or to our founding values and principles of the MDC. And we are going to make sure that whatever we do, we do it based on our founding values, on our founding principles as a movement. So this is the leadership that we is here. And we called you so that you know that we are here at the Morgan Richard Twangrai House today. We are now working from the Morgan Richard Twangrai House. And this is the leadership which is going to be making sure that we take this country forward, we build our nation so that every Zimbabwe has a better life. I will hand over to the Secretary General so that he takes you through on the issues that we discuss as a standing committee. Over to you, Secretary General. Thank you, Honorable President. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, and the members of the National Standing Committee. <coughs> I would like to start with uh, the co-optations that happened today uh, to the leadership. As you know, some of the leaders left the party uh, to form their own political party. So in terms of the constitution, certain positions um, have to be approved by the National Council, certain positions um, uh, appointed uh, where there is a, a gap and the following uh, have been uh, appointed into the National Standing Committee in terms of Clause 9 of our Constitution. Um, Engineer Elias Mzuri, Senator Mzuri, is the Deputy National Chairperson. Honorable um, Chimanikire, Gift Chimanikire, uh, the Deputy National Organizing Secretary. As you know, uh, Honorable Abed Nico Bebe uh, is here and is the National Chairperson. Deputy Treasury, uh, uh, sorry, National Organizing Secretary. Deputy Treasurer General, again, that position is vacant and it is now being occupied by um, Chief Mjovu. Chief Mjovu was the uh, Provincial Chairperson for the South African Province for the 2014 structures. The Deputy National Spokesperson, um, uh, Honorable Kalipani Pugen, um, is now the Deputy St uh, uh, National Spokesperson. And uh, the Chairperson for the Youth Assembly, as you know, Mr. Epmoji Ziwa of Vondo, has uh, publicly stated that uh, he is no longer a member of the party. So his deputy has taken over as the chairperson of the National Youth Assembly. It is a good surprise, ladies and gentlemen, I can anticipate that, and that person is Shakespeare Mokoi. <laughs> Our Secretary for Elections uh, is uh, Mr. Manasa Changrai, the, uh, uh, the young brother to our icon. We will be making some other announcement as we get clarity on uh, where various officers stand. But these are appointments. Oh, yes. The Deputy National uh, Secretary for Elections is uh, Honorable Gandhi Mudzingwa, um, a long time veteran of this, of this struggle. There is a, 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 a position that I, we will announce later regarding the women once we have uh, resolved that. Um, some of the resolutions that we uh, dealt with today, number one, dealt with Harvest House. Whose property is it? We saw in the court some people claiming that the Harvest House belonged to them. 
we reiterate that the Harvest House belongs to the Movement for Democratic Change as a party. And we will do everything that is in our power to safeguard our property. So there are matters that are before the courts, but we want to make it clear that the Harvest House or Morgan Changrai House is not a private property owned by the company. It is owned by, it, it is a, a, a property that is owned by the party. And we will be able to prove that uh, when the time comes in the course of law. We also resolve that we are going to fulfill the Supreme Court judgment. And the Supreme Court was very kind to us in dealing with the document that is now called the Constitution, settled document as the Constitution of the Movement for Democratic Change. That's number one. Number two, nullification of the Supreme Court of the presidency of Advocate Nelson Chamisa and everything that he did in his capacity as president. That includes signing agreements with other people. All that is nullified. We also discussed the issue of the recalls of councillors, um, as well as members of parliament who have joined other political parties. We are going to proceed with this, but we will deal with this on a case-by-case -case basis. And as, as we have said and maintained before, we are not a vindictive leadership we are not there simply to cause misery to people. We are there to safeguard the interests of the members of the MDC. So those who have joined other political parties cannot continue to represent our members in parliament. The, we, we, we want to reiterate here that the Supreme Court, the, the, the High Court, ruled um, that uh, we can continue with our recalls. In other words, the interdict that sought to stop us from recalling was dismissed by Justice Chitabi. Uh, they have appealed against it, but they are appealing against nothing because they did not have the order in the first place. Then the other judgment by uh, Justice Mafusire to say that we cannot replace members of parliament even after the expire, uh, even as we face the expiry of the mandatory 90 days, we have appealed against that judgment. The effect of the appeal is to suspend the decision appealed against. And therefore, as things stand, nothing stops us from recalling our members of parliament and replacing our members of parliament. And we will exercise, uh, if need be, we will exercise that lawful option. We received a report on the handover, takeover of Morgan Shangri House. And this has been a subject of a lot of propaganda, which has unfortunately sucked in some of the countries uh, in, in this world because of the uh, images that were broadcast by our colleagues. But this is what the Harvest House on the 4th of uh, June 2020 and at 5 o'clock experienced a handover takeover, which involved um, security guards at this building. So three people came in, uh, new security guards came in to relieve the two who were on duty. So they signed the handover, takeover in a book that we call the occurrence book. Uh, this is the book that is at the reception where we record uh, the handover, takeover. It was smooth and it was without incident. And we reiterate that Advocate Nelson Chamisa was informed of that occurrence. That is why in my statement of that day, I referred to him, I referred to the letter that had been written by the acting president to him and specifically referred to him. In all the court papers, he did not file any papers to dispute that. So there was a smooth handover, takeover. Then after about uh, three hours, I issued the statement and after three hours, three hours after the statement, around 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, a child on Wende and the Denford and God's War and the 45 um, <laughs> thugs came to this uh, building and tried to enter the building via the back door. They broke the door uh, at the back uh, and the police who were on patrol intervened and called for reinforcement.
we view it as malicious to suggest that the takeover of this building involved the army and the police. The army has been patrolling the streets of Harare since the declaration of the lockdown. And I want you, ladies and gentlemen, to take judicial notice of the fact that 60 meters from where we are um, towards parliament, you will see offices of the Zimbabwe Defense Forces. So the army does have its offices in this street, about 60 meters from where we are. And of course, when the noise was generated, they were naturally attracted by that, but they, they specifically uh, refused to intervene in the dispute. And this was confirmed by the employees of Harvest House who took us to court. Washington Gaga, Shawanga uh, Shambare, Kudakwashe Matibiri, Idi Minyaka, and others. They took us to court and they specifically said that the police refused to intervene uh, in the takeover of Harvest House. That is in their affidavit. They also said the army refused to intervene and these are the affidavits that are before the courts of law. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be announcing, uh, following the resignation of Honorable Obed Gutu, we will be announcing our spokesperson in due course after the uh, consultations have taken place. Uh, we also discussed the petition that came from certain members of the National Council who wanted us to hold an emergency National Council. And our attitude is that uh, we will hold the National Council once the, 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 the circumstances uh, permit uh, gatherings um, involving these big numbers because the National Council is 202 people. So we will hold the meeting of the National Council. The President will instruct us regarding the deaths once we have received um, uh, information about uh, the gatherings. So we are going to have that meeting uh, we are not in a hurry to have that meeting because uh, we had a meeting of the National Standing Co uh, National uh, Council uh, on, on, uh, virtually uh, on the 9th of May, and this meeting had uh, uh, made far-reaching decisions. But should members of the party want their leaders to conduct another meeting, we are open. We want uh, to have this meeting, and we will announce the date uh, in due course. Ladies and gentlemen, as the, as the movement for democratic change, as our president has said, we are now going to be embarking on the reform agenda. As you, can, as you remember, the party had been on the reform trajectory with the formation of the national election reform agenda under President Changrai, the demonstrations that we held for electoral reforms. This had been packed uh, in the issue of electoral reforms social reforms, economic reforms, political reforms, had all been uh, 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 shelved. We are now going to embark on the reform process, on the reform agenda. And we are going uh, to be discussing with other political parties. In the standing committee, uh, the president gave a report uh, of the meeting that we had with the alliance partners. As you know, uh, some time ago, I think two weeks ago, we had a meeting of five out of the seven alliance partners. Uh, and this meeting was to discuss the future of the alliance. We did not conclude uh, on the, this discussion and we were supposed to carry the discussion uh, on the 13th of June. Again, we couldn't because of um, certain logistical reasons. But we are committed to working with others. We are committed to creating synergies. The president and other senior leaders will be meeting leaders of civic society uh, to brief them on what is happening uh, within the party, to brief them on how we are bringing the, the party back uh, to the rails. Uh, as, as you know, the party had been derailed and so on. So we want to bring back a leadership and a new politics, a new politics that is based on rational disputation and a new politics that abhors violence, use of hate language, uh, and so on. A new politics that looks at the lives of the poor Zimbabwean people, that looks at the lives of the disadvantaged uh, advantaged masses of Zimbabwe. 
and the leadership say uh, in the meeting that we are going to go back to the founding objectives of the MDC. And the founding objective is one, and it was to fulfill the unfinished business of the liberation struggle. And this is what this leadership has committed itself to be doing. And uh, I have to let you into various things that the leadership said um, uh, and so on. Uh, the need for tolerance, um, an apology that was given by my young brother Shakespeare to the president. And that was quite touching. And we are very grateful at the level of maturity displayed by Shakespeare in that regard. And uh, please, um, uh, we want uh, everybody to join us in thanking him for what he has done. Uh, and I've been talking to him. He is very focused on the objective of this struggle. And you will be seeing more and more of him as he leads his youth assembly um, in, in, in the country. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to end here regarding uh, the resolutions that we had today. And we would want to invite questions. Um, sorry, forget, sorry. Let me take one. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. We, we came out here just to attend to you because we've been waiting for some We had to finish our meeting. So I'm going to take one or two rounds uh, quickly so that we can be able to go off the question. If the question has been asked, please don't ask it again. Just, just, just appreciate that we, we are constrained with time. So I'm going to start right there. As number one, I'm going to come to you. I want you to count the business. So that's number one. Number two. Number three. Ah, that's not me. So you guys agree with us. Number four. Right? OK. Yeah, let's go. Lion Tali from 263 Church. My question is in regards to the Pollard. Uh, did you, anything pop up on the issue of joining Pollard? What's the uh, status? Okay, if not, I'll take the questions and then the leadership will come and then answer. Number two. Yes. Uh, my name is Tonio. I'm with uh, Checkmate Dot TV. I, I need to present these questions uh, to, to the whole leadership. I need to see who exactly is able to do going to be able to answer this question. Maybe to you, Honorable uh, Wanjo. I, I need to understand uh, there is a general perception that the new MDCT is a club of members who lost the last elections and are trying to find themselves back into the politics by coming together using a backdoor. How do you respond to that? And uh, maybe my, my, can I ask this? How many questions is that? Let me ask Not as many, let me do the second one. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe the second question is, uh, uh, what's your take on the last uh, Congress that was done? Because uh, it looked like some of you were there and you actually did lose that last Congress and now you are coming back uh, to have a certain different party. Uh, do, do, you, do you take that as a legit uh, Congress before the constitutional announcement was done? Was that not a consultative uh, process that was done within your voters and the people? And how do you take that? And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let the other Number three. Yes, my name is Blessed Tanga from Hutchinson TV and Radio. Uh, you said that the police were dealing with COVID-19 related issues. Uh, are the police who are parked outside in that um, truck also dealing with COVID-19 um, issues? Uh, because we have seen them since they take over. Uh, station with, or maybe there's a new police station that is outside. Just, just wanted, um, just wanted clarity uh, on that issue. And my, my second and um, last, um, last question um, is that what is going to be your engagement level 
vita vita zanuki um, here is it because we have seen that we have warmed up already to Poland Madame President Kuti has been warming up to, to Zanuki here is this the, still the same status quo same engagement or you are going to be facing uh, Zanuki and seeking accountability where for instance there are serious allegations of corruption yes we have not had this speak up about that or against that so I want to understand your relationship this far with Zanuki going forward thank you okay thank you and then we'll come for the second round over to you Madam President the ST. Uh, thank you very much. Um, le let me just say um, just uh, uh, do the let me answer on the question of uh, Poland. Um, we did not discuss that issue today. Um, uh, we we discuss uh, discuss other issues. Uh, that issue is going to come, and we will advise you uh, once we have uh, discussed about it. Um, are the police parked there enforcing COVID? Now, I want you to understand that they've been parked there before the takeoff. So you cannot say that they parked it because of the takeoff. They have been parked in the streets um, for a long period before the takeover, and you must take judicial notice of that. But after the takeover, the peaceful takeover, and the violence that when they tried to initiate, we obtained a peace order. And this peace order was obtained in the magistrate court and it precluded certain members from coming to Harvest House and causing a breach of peace. It also specifically advised the police to maintain law and order and to make sure that the order is enforced. But the police that you see are not parked at the Harvest House. The police you see are parked outside um, uh, FBC. Just take judicial notice of that. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to take judicial notice again that the army has its offices 60 meters from here. And I did ask uh, my colleagues, my colleagues to measure that because I was anticipating your question. And that is the 35 to 40 meters away from uh, this building. We cannot control that. That has nothing to do with us. Um, and uh, as, I, as far as we can see, they have not uh, 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 disturbed anybody. Um, the engagement levels with ZANU PF. We are an opposition party. But you, you will find that we are an opposition party that is going to engage with ZANU PF in the manner that Morgan Changres leadership engaged with ZANU PF. Um, and the engagement with ZANU PF was multi, multi faceted, multi pronged. So we, we are an opposition party. We are going to hold the government to account. We see that uh, some of uh, the members of the press ignored a very beautiful fight that was waged by our MPs in parliament and that dealt with the. Uh, uh, the abduction of the girls. It was done, that, 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 that debate was done by Honorable Tekeshe, Honorable Makonya, Honorable Vincent Changrai, who had been the first MPs to heed our calls to come to Parliament. And I also uh, <laughs> debated on that. So, yes, we, 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 we are going to engage ZANU-PF in Parliament. We are going to engage ZANU-PF in the political life. But we are going to be uh, advancing the interests of the Zimbabwean people, the real objective why we were formed. We know that there's been a lot of propaganda. You have my young brother Rohanya, who has forgotten that he's a journalist in the first place, um, uh, getting uh, into a propaganda. This is how he describes us. But what we really are, we are a leadership that is democratic. We are a leadership that is pro-reform. We are a leadership that is pro-change. We are the lead, a leadership that is not unnecessarily talkative. We are a leadership that plans. And you will see uh, the, um, the, the leadership here. This is a serious uh, leadership. And uh, if I, I can just abuse this uh, uh, opportunity. Um, 
Engineer Mzuri was the organizing secretary in 2008. And in 2008, we won both the presidency and the parliament and local government. And his deputy was Honorable um, Morgan Komich. They were the people who were in the organizing department who planned ZANU-PF downfall. The deputy president to Changrai was Madame Kufe. And when Morgan Changrai was forced into exile, she remained the acting president in this country at that period in time. Um, and, and various of these leaders were doing one work or another. So we have an experienced leadership, a mature leadership, and so on. Um, my friend from the uh, lovely TV, uh, thank you very much for that question, uh, which deals with uh, uh, people lost in Gweru. And I've heard people continuing saying that, uh, Mr. Monzora, you lost in Gweru. The same people don't say that Mr. Chamisa lost it to me in Harare in 2014. <laughs> so when you trace the history of defeat in elections, don't be selective. I also beat him. I also won at one point in time. That's not a, 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 an important point. But what is the important point? The important point is that before we went to Gweru, the matter of Mashawire was heard in the High Court before Justice Mushore in March. In, this, in the standing committee, I then urged my colleagues to stop the Congress in Gweru. I was overruled. And democracy is the dictatorship of the majority. But I gave my legal advice. It was not listened to. On the 8th, I think, of May, Justice Mshore delivered a judgment which had, which, which had far-reaching consequences on the leadership. I made two suggestions. The first suggestion was that we cancel the Congress altogether. The second suggestion was that we convert the Gweru Congress into an extraordinary Congress. Um, and in that regard, we had to change the Electoral College. Again, we were in the minority. And yes, I did contest in Gweru well knowing that this was a waste of time. And I did tell my colleagues that it was a waste of time. History has absolved me. We are not here because of a loss in an election in a Congress that was nullified. We are here because the Supreme Court of Zimbabwe has ruled in favor of one of us. And that one of us is Elias Mashavira, who was our organizing secretary for Gokwe District. He was proven right by the courts. Because we are not an arrogant leadership, we are going to listen to people who have won in the court cases. We, do, we are not condescending towards him. So we are going to do the correct thing. We want constitutionalism. We want, to accept, we want people to respect the rule of law. And this is what binds us. And this is what we want to do. And if you trace our history, each one of us here, you will find that it is a history which deals with constitutionalism, uh, human rights, and the rule of law. And this is the passion that we are simply following. Okay. First of all, I would like to say that the MDC is an organization which has a constitution. This constitution was written by us. And it was adopted first in 2000 at, the, at our first Congress in Chutungu. Then it was adopted again in 2006 at the National Sports Stadium. And then it was adopted again in 2011 in Baba Fields and in 2014 at the National Sports Stadium. This constitution tells us what to do and not what to do. And what the Supreme Court simple deed was that it said go back and do what was supposed to be done after the demise of our late president, Dr. Morgan Richard Tangerai. Article 9.21.1 clearly states that after the death of the president, the deputy president assumes 
the position of acting president for a period not exceeding 12 months and then calls for an extraordinary Congress. Unfortunately, this was not done. So what the Supreme Court simply did was that it said, what happened in Bulawayo at the Stanley Square in April and what happened in Gweru in May, um, 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 was it 20, 2019, is null and void. So both groups must go back and do what the Constitution says they must do. And this is what the symbol did. So I have been reinstated as the acting president of MDCT. MDCT has got 103 MPs in parliament, meaning that I am currently the leader of that political party, which has 103 MPs in that parliament. It has happened in other countries. I would like to give an example of South Africa. Musa Maimani was the leader of DA, and currently he is no longer the leader of DA. There is a new leader in that parliament who is now the leader of those MPs who are there right now. And currently I am the leader of MDCT with the 103 MPs. So the issue of two MPs or whatever MPs does not arise because we are doing exactly what the Supreme Court has asked us to do. And already we are preparing for the extraordinary Congress. We are busy right now and want to make sure that it becomes a, a success where we are going to fill the position left by our leader, Dr. Mokhtar Okay. Um, I'm not your I'm not your follow-up because I who else has a follow-up? I'm not your follow-up. Please, it must be follow-ups, not new questions, and so that we can go the second round. Is it a follow-up? No, not yet. Okay, let me just do follow-ups, and then we'll, we'll take the new questions. Yes, I'll start with you. Uh, my follow-up question is, with regarding the two MPs, who were elected, and you very to Honorable Prince and the other senator, who were elected on the party that was ruled now in all. Okay. What happened to them? All right, Madam President, your follow-up? Yes, uh, Madam President, you note that you followed the Constitution, but the court said that what you did in Stanley Square was not following the Constitution. So you must be fired from the party for joining another political party, which is stated in your Constitution that anyone who supports any political party other than this one, should be fired. So you should not be sitting there as if you just did how good you Okay. All right. Uh, Madam President, SG. The two MPs, like I said earlier on, the Supreme Court said we must all go back uh, to the 14th of February after 2018. And it is clear those MPs are now part of the 103 MPs who are MPs who belong to the MTCT. I did not, you are saying I'm supposed to be fired because I joined another political party. Or formed. Or formed another political party. The party that I led is MDC Tsangirai. That is the party which contested. And we were very clear to say our colleagues have deviated from the founding values and principles of MDCT, that of non-violence, that of non-discrimination, that of not following the Constitution. And we remained, respecting the Constitution, we remained, you know, along those founding values and principles of the MDCT. We are very, we are very clear from the onset. But however, the Supreme Court said, Tell the square and uh, and and and, and, and well, go back and do what was supposed to be done, where I was supposed to be given an opportunity to act as, as acting president, and then call for an extraordinary congress. And this is what I'm working on. I am definitely going to call for an extraordinary congress, which is going to elect a new leader. And this is who we are right now. I did not violate any constitution. I tried by whatever means possible to follow what was in the constitution. However. The Supreme Court said we must go back and then do what the Constitution tells us to do. Yes, Chief, would you like to? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. All right. Uh, I'm sure you're safe. No, no. 
Okay. Baba, it's fine. You may not be happy with the answer, but it is the answer. That the, no, 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 wait. No, no, it's fine. Wait. Hear me out. Hear me out. That do not belong to the MTC. It's okay, here yeah, by the Supreme Court. Uh, now, no. let, let, me, let me answer that. Um, uh, if I may answer that. Yes, yes, yes. The Supreme Court re realized the two things. Mm -hmm. That uh, uh, after the demise of uh, Dr. Changrai, the party split into two factions. The one faction was the faction that heralded the Congress at Stanley Square. By the way, the Congress at Stanley Square was called an extraordinary Congress. It was not an inaugural Congress to form a party. Um, and then it realized, it recognized another faction uh, led by Advocate Chamisa that remained part of the MDC alliance. The attitude of the course was that these were factions of one party. Um, these were tributaries of one river. Um, and therefore, uh, the the Supreme Court then said, return to the status quo ante uh, uh, as at the day after Changrai died, but before the National Council. That meant that the two factions were now being brought into one party. So it is now one party. So these MPs are MPs which belong to one party now. Uh, and they, they, they belong to the group which had more uh, more members of parliament, they are now one. That is why this party is now being led by the one president who is presiding not over a faction, but over a united party with all its assets, including Harvest House, all the offices across the country, <laughs> and the MPs and the councillors. So that is the legal position that, 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 that as it stands. But, but let me take you back to history. In May 2018, I think, Advocate Chamisa um, presided over a discussion to recall Madam Kupe from Parliament. And I'm sure you remember that she was recalled from Parliament by Advocate Chamisa. Now, how do you recall somebody who is not a member of your party? You can only recall somebody who is a member of your party. So this has been one party, and they even went to court to stop her from using the name. And Justice Bere ruled that because it was a faction, it cannot bar another faction from using the assets of the party, including its name and its constitution. They have <laughs> always been using this constitution, identical word for word. So, the proper way of looking at it is that the Supreme Court reunified the party and is now one entity which was led by Morgan Chandra. Okay. Right. Thank you. Uh, let me take the last round. I'll prioritize those that did not ask in the first place. You did ask, right? No, I didn't ask. That's number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. So there's something about this number four. What's happening? <laughs> Just asking questions in fours. Okay, you can show. Well, my name is Costa from newsabobo.com. You directed to Dr. Kupe. You pulled 45,000 votes in the previous elections. That must be a very worrisome figure for someone who aspired to gain state power. What convinced, what, is, what makes you so much convinced that this time around you gain political, um, political capital so that you can attract a huge following? Okay, number two. Uh, my name is Afani, so this is from uh, Flying Media. Um, it follows that uh, maybe the MPs, uh, because of the Supreme Court judgment, and the powers that are vested in your constitution, you have the ability to call back those MPs. Do you have the same ability to call supporters to you? Okay. Number three. Yes, well, uh, um, Again from Tech 19, you are directing a question back uh, to Madam Kube this time around. Uh, Madam Kube, if, if you may clarify with us uh, in the interest of understanding this, so we do know that by the time you had left the party, you were not in good standing with uh, Morgan Lisa Changre, that you now uh, are coming out to represent fully well, that you had actually left uh, way before Nelson Chamisa was given uh, the president of the party. 
what was your uh, relationship like uh, with uh, Mommy Jatangira? And uh, how do you feel uh, representing the MDCT, which uh, gained, what, where, where you gained 40,000 and you got 2.6 million or 2.1 million in that level? How does that make you feel to then uh, say that you represent all these 110 MPs when these people are definitely denied you giving the polls recently? How does that make you feel to say you did them now? Number four. Number four. My name is Eli Yotam, I'm a freelance journalist. My question is related to the old Eli Yotam as well. You are, you are referring to the late Sangirai and the Supreme Court judgment. How about the electorate? I do take them to the Supreme Court or the late Sangirai today? Okay, thank you. So, you asked your question, did you? That's one last one. Sorry? Are you going to give another round? Yeah, we'll, we'll come for, for more parts. Yeah. Is it, is it one extra? Yeah. Okay, I said, okay. we need to close. Mm. After this, we... Yes, yeah, well, that's the last one. Okay, this is the last one, so... Just, just shoot them. Well, there, there's a video that circulates on social media uh, where you visited um, Morgan Changraisi Tombstone a couple of uh, weeks ago. There have been reports and allegations that you were there for rituals. Would you like to take this opportunity to clarify what exactly was going on there? Okay. All right, Madam President, SG. Okay. Um, th th thank you very much. I want to start with one unscientific question that is being asked. And this unscientific question is uh, what happens to the supporters? That, that uh, Nelson Chamisa is more supporters than everyone. Now, and you go to the 2.1 million, 2.6 million debatable. Now, can I answer this by a rhetorical, rhetorical question? And the rhetorical question is that, did the MDCT in the alliance not campaign as a unit? In other words, did we, uh, Wamuzuri, Wakomichi, myself, not campaign in that election for that 2.6 million votes? And how much of that do you give to us? How much do you attribute to us? So you, you may and and, and, and how, how, uh, why do you say we contributed zero? I went and, commit, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and contested in Manikalet. Uh, that is the zone that I was given to contest to 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 to, uh, to campaign. Sorry, to campaign for the president and the MPs. And in Manikaland, Morgan, uh, uh, Nelson Chamisa polled two hundred ninety-six thousand votes. Uh, to Mnangag was two two hundred ninety-two thousand votes. A different of four, a difference of four thousand votes. MDC Alliance won. The presidency in Manikale. How much of that do you attribute to my efforts <laughs> and the efforts of the other comrades? Now, when we deal with the political parties, we are not dealing with individuals. We are dealing with the institution. So we're not going to now, the that, institution. Wait, 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 so we'll give you an opportunity. Just let him. So the, <laughs> it's they, they are institutional votes. But again, another unscientific part of your assumption is that you have carried the census and you have found us with no support. Wait, because we have a surprise for you. We do have the support. And you will see, you will see when we conduct our Congress that we do have the support. Now, you were told by Walshman Nube who, by the way, poured something sometime, okay? You were told by Washman Nube that we would form a quorum at the Congress. And surprise, surprise, we have surpassed that by people who have confirmed to come to want to come to the Congress. And uh, again, uh, we were told that uh, we will never be to a, a, a Davis House. We will never take this building. <laughs> and where are we? We were told that we will not win a single case. Where are we? We were told that we will not be able to recall. Where are we? Why do you underestimate us, my brother? <laughs> Remember, this is the leadership 
that it ended ZANU PF its first uncontested defeat. Not just ZANU PF, ZANU PF of Mugabe. Now, I just want to, I know the president will, will answer it herself, but I just want to go to the unscientific part about what was stated, about what happened in Puera. About five minutes after we had left the homestead, Pet Sairo Anya <laughs> tweeted that people were chanting Chamisa's name at uh, Changre's graveside, and that a video was, 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 was uh, coming to prove his allegations. Up to now, I'm waiting for that video. Up to now, you have not seen that video where his name is being chanted. So these are some of the these are some of the false words that are said. A symbol graveside eulogy, common in African tradition, is converted into a ritual. How do people do rituals in the broad daylight, in the presence of the deceased his relatives, mm -hmm. his young brothers? his mother, his nephews, and his segurus, they were there. This is how low our politics has gone. Who hasn't visited the, the grave? Who hasn't spoken at the grave? Who is it who hasn't done that? So in, I know the president is going to answer that, but Zimbabwe has more important things to think about. The opposition has more to think about than superstition. Our people are living in poverty and misery. And we need to take them away from this poverty and misery. And we do not do that by this petty thinking in my respectful view. Thank you. Okay, I think he has responded to the issue of, of, of Punera, and he has also responded to the issue of 45,000 votes. And what I can only say is that each and every election has its own dynamics. Come 2023, watch the space. Then my relationship with the president, I had a very good working relationship with my president. I have deputized him for 12 years. Years. I worked with him for 26 years. Yes, of course, there was a problem. That one problem when we attacked in Bulawayo. And the president sat exactly where I am sitting right now. And he apologized about what happened in Bulawayo. Myself and Abed Nico Bebe went to the president's house and we met him. And the president apologized. Two weeks before the I went to South Africa. I visited the president in hospital. He was very excited to see me. We chatted, we spoke. The president, for your own information, for those who do not know, phoned me two days before he passed on, for those who do not know. I was phoned two days before the president passed on. It was very difficult for him to speak, but those were his last words. You know, he couldn't speak, and I kept on saying, President, you'll be fine, because I've gone through the same problem. I had cancer as well, and I thought that my president was going to be well. Little did I know that um, the situation had gotten worse. May his soul rest in peace. But in a nutshell, I had a good working relationship with the president. And to sum it all, our role as the opposition is to make sure that every Zimbabwean has a better life. We want to make sure that Zimbabweans have jobs, they have food. They have good health, good education, clean water and sanitation. This is what these people sitting in front here are going to be fighting for. And we'll make sure that at the end of the day, the people of Zimbabwe have a better life. Thank you, Madam President. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, okay. Yes, okay. We'll do it next time around. There's another standing committee next week. I'll